Boulder, Colorado, one of the most picturesque locations in the world, let alone for college football, and you will see plenty of buffaloes roaming here. There's just something about the nightcap. After a day of wall-to-wall -wall football, it just seems this is when chaos ensues. As we'll see a squad from the Big 12, the Baylor Bears, taking on another unit from the Big 12, the Colorado Buffaloes. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. And the Buffaloes will kick it away to start us off. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. So the Baylor Bears offense will get the first swing of the game. And this wide receiver, he's the linchpin to the offense. They want to make sure they find a multitude of ways to get him the football. And it's a risk-reward scenario on defense when you're trying to cover this guy, Reese, because you play man coverage, you risk him running by you and catching deep balls, you play too much zone, and then he can hurt you after the catch. A lot of different ways that this guy is very dangerous. Now they'll run the draw. Good job running tough and behind his pads as he gets up to the 38-yard line. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. They got him at the 42, but he got five yards on the play. And the Bears getting set on first and ten. Use the play fake. Now to throw. Catch in the middle, it's Baldwin. And perhaps a touchdown saving tackle as he gets him down at the 37. Off the deflection, missed a great chance to force the turnover. Instead, it'll be second down. He couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. To the air, it's Finn. Finds his tight end. Ripping off a good chunk inside the 25, and they're set up with a first down. A new set of downs after the completion. Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can catch the football, get upfield, and chew up some extra yards. That one did not go well. Tackled in the backfield for a loss of six. You know, as an offense, oftentimes you try the reverse play because you're trying to take advantage of a defense over pursuing and by a lot of defensive team speed. Didn't work right there. Great discipline by this defense. They hope to get him in space, create running room, and there just wasn't anything there. Yeah, I love the third down aggressive in-your-face defense, not giving you any room to run down the field. Great job by the defense. They saw the throw, the quick pass, reacted to it, got him on the ground for a loss. After putting up the field goal, they're set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. And good work by the coverage team to knock down the return man. The Buffalo's offense will take the field for the first time. This is just a great matchup to watch on the outside and who can win downfield in the passing game. Man, this reminds me of 1997, Charles Woodson versus David Boston. Two physical athletes that are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe all game long. Yeah, two alphas, two guys that play the positions where you have to have such confidence, cornerback, wide receiver. Let's see this throwdown. Oh, I love that play call. This offense is going to run the football. They're not just going to do it between the tackles, but they're going to attack you outside. You saw that with that handoff. They get to the right. They get him in space using his speed. Good play call. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. Looking to pass. It's Sanders. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. And that one's incomplete. 
So no dice on third down, and they'll punt it away on fourth. Third and long situations are really hard to convert. The defense knows it's going to be passed. The pass rushers are getting upfield. You're under pressure. You don't have timing. And as a result now, fourth down. They'll put that return to a stop at the 33, but the offense set up in pretty good field position. The lone back's got it. A stop him cold maybe gets a yard to the 34. Didn't get much on first down in second and nine. He's looking to throw. Makes the catch. It's Baldwin. They get him on the ground, but it's a first down. Offense lines up for a first and 10 from the 43. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. They bring him down, and he's going to lose the yard on that one. This offense has a second down play. They give it to him again. Several defenders there to get him on the ground. Here on third down, will they go back to the running game? They'll try to pick it up on the ground. He's got enough to move the chains, and they'll spot it at the 47. The Bears are moving quickly down the field. Well, they needed two yards to get that first down. That's exactly what they got. Great job of execution. No secret about it. Just got to be physical, get a hat on a hat, low man wins, all the cliches to get that third down and short. The give to the left side. Great job by the whole defense. But how about the little bitty defensive back throwing his face in the fan? I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. On third down, he drops to throw. Caught in the backfield. It's Presley. And how about that alertness and that swarming D to keep him from getting the first down? You got to love that. On defense, one of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. What do you do? You've set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and sell it. He'll be stopped just short of the 20 at the 19. Give him one. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Looking to throw at Sanders. He's got his man. Makes the catch and he's brought down. Passing game very effective on second down. What about here on third? Looking to throw. They'll run the screen. Jukes his way for more. And after the tackle, we are headed to the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the quarter, and it's Baylor holding the edge. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. They are lined up and ready to go and get things started here in the second. And the Buffaloes will bring the punt team onto the field. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. The solid return there offsets some of the punt yardage and really sets up this offense nicely. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. The inside handoff. And he won't quite get there, but boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first, an array of possibilities here. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football and run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. That will be enough for a first down as he crosses the 50 and gets it to the 48. And the Bears come to the line with a new set of downs. After run, 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 now throw. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Second and ten after the previous play. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. They wrestle him to the ground, but he's got plenty for a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. He'll pull it on the read. And he'll pick up one. It brings up second and nine. Win with the running game on first down, now back at it. Leaves it with the back. Strikes first, delivers the punch, and works his way to the 31. This has the makings of a good drive. The seventh play brings up a third and four. 
catch in the middle. It's Jackson. Moving deeper into enemy territory. Move the chains. It's first down at the 27. It's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. Give to the running back. They get him down top one, picks up four. They'll mark it at the 19. Do they have another third down conversion in the bag? Already two for two on this drive. It's third and two. Grabbed in the middle, it's Johnson. <clears throat> Brought to the ground, but not before getting enough for the first down. Finally, this offense starting to show a little juice. They've got a first and 10. That is so deflating on defense, too, because in your own red zone, third down, you need to make a stop. You know they're going to throw to the weapon at tight end, but it's one thing to draw it up on the blackboard. It's another thing to go execute and prevent that guy from catching the ball. He's so big. He's so athletic. You can have the perfect play call on, and he's still picking up the first. This drive started about the time Walter Camp invented football, but the defense can fire. Fires into traffic. It's picked off. And he's brought down after the pick, but not before putting his offense in business. And it just turns out to be a missed opportunity. You get the ball in the red zone, and you turn it over. Momentum, it plays a big role for teams, and especially for offenses. And when you have chances like that, when you're down in this area of the field, you've got to be able to come away with points. Even if it's not going to be a touchdown, you are not leaving this area of the field without putting at least three up on the board. Missed opportunity for the other. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Fires the pass. Intercepted. Touchdown, Bears! The defense puts six on the board with a big-time interception return. What a play by this defense with the pick six. And how about the defender? Exactly what you're supposed to do. Breaks on the football, makes the interception. Everybody on defense, we turn to offense. Go lay some blocks so my guy can get it and take it back to the house. They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? All right, guys, want to update you on a game that went final moments ago. Georgia Southern showed its toughness on the road and picked up a crucial victory. And every win counts, don't get me wrong, but the victories outside of the comforts of home can really serve as a springboard. It's one game. You don't want to react too much either way. But I think both teams will leave this one with some things to work on moving forward. Kevin, thanks a lot for that one. Sounds as if they had a good one there. Tackled at the 28. It's a pickup of five. Now on first down from the 28. Wide receiver now comes in motion. The give to the back. Got the first down and still on his feet. Really good job to pick up a chunk of yardage and get it out to the 39-yard line. Quarterback, quick pass to the receiver. Great move there. Couldn't ask for much more there. A first down, and they're down to the 42. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Running back searching for a hole. And a good, solid pickup there before the defense knocks him down. After the nine-yard pickup on first down, here's second and one. It can get pretty wild in the Big 12. Some of these outposts are like snake pits when you have to go on the road. Got to get off to a quick start in conference. It is always wacky, Reese. Like, there's always something that happens in the Big 12, and somebody comes out of nowhere in the Big 12 every single year. So starting in conference play, Paul, where these games start to really matter, really add up, and the pressure amplifies. It's so true, too. When you think about the Big 12 conference, it just seems like teams get caught sleepwalking. So you've got to start fast. And the challenge, I think, for these coaching staffs, these two... And makes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado! 
That's a nice drive and nice physicality, punching it in with the run game. And here's the thing, I like where this offense is going. Nice job creating some momentum, going into the half, cutting down the lead. This thing could get really exciting. Nice job answering the bell right before the half. The AT unit on the field. And with the extra point, the lead is cut to three. It's 10 to seven. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. Scanning the field, it's Finn. A strike downfield. All kinds of room to the right. The 10. And he'll take it to the house. He got loose. Touchdown, Baylor! This offense is so explosive, they can change the scoreboard in a flash. You just saw that on that drive. He'll try to tack on one more. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. Kickoff team has the ball teed up and they're about ready to go. Looks as if the returner will try and field this one. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic that they get him on the ground at the 20. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. Running out of time here in the first half, and they do have a chance to make this a one-possession game. And so you got to locate your best players and get them the football on this drive. You're down in the game. There's obviously a lot of football left, David, but on this drive, in this two-minute situation, best players got to touch the ball. And this could get into pressing mode, right? Like you go into the half, down a couple of scores, it starts to, the pressure really, really mounts. Good opportunity to take some of that pressure off, get some momentum, energize this squad going into halftime. And he was hit just as he released it, and it falls to the turf. The Buffaloes will punt this one away. And that's a play on third down. This offense just has to do a better job protecting their quarterback, give them a split second more time to complete that throw, but they couldn't do it there. They'll put a stop to that return as he gets it up to the 41-yard line. The first down for the offense. They're going to throw it to start the drive. Caught over the middle. It's Bell. Apparently some confusion as the offense calls the timeout. It's their first of the half. Second down coming up. He's looking to throw. Quickly complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have enough for the first down. Fresh set of downs after the completion. The clock will stop with this timeout from the offense. They'll get a chance to regroup on the sideline. Now a first down from the 45-yard line. To the air, it's Finn. Holds it in. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. He'll come out throwing on first down. Got it in the middle, it's Baldwin. And they make the connection, and he's got it at the 10-yard line, set up with a red zone opportunity. Comes out throwing on first down. Makes his connection. That completion will take it close to the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the six. They'll use a timeout right before halftime. Maybe time for one or two more plays. And here on second down, they'll send out the field goal unit to try to get three before the break. He got it. And now the lead is extended a little far. That makes the score. That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. 
Here he comes from inside his own five. Good job by the coverage unit to stop the return man. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, Yeoman's work so far today in Boulder. And welcome in to the halftime update. And we have to start this halftime breakdown by addressing the play of this elite wide receiver. This is clearly a young man who, once he's finished playing on Saturdays, he's going to be playing on Sundays. The kid has different gears. He has a knack for finding gaps in the defense. And I can't remember a college player with that kind of catch radius. With that said, let's send it back to the fellas at Folsom Field. The Bears will line up to kick off and start the second half. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. To the air, it's Sanders. Slips through his hands and incomplete, and they had everything set up for the screen except the catch. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. And you got to wonder if this offense is going to go for it here. They're trailing now by a lot. I know there's a lot of football still to go, and I know they're on their own end of the field, but just kind of get the feeling their defense hasn't gotten a ton of stops. They may need to stay out there, and they're going to need this quarterback to make a play. He showed it all there, a little elusiveness, a little power, and he's got the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Might as well run him until they stop him. He's got it again. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Takes the easy completion. They ripped off seven on that one. Now a third down and three. Trying to pick up a first down. It'll be a run on third and short. Across the 25, he's got room. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. And the Bears have their offense in high gear. And that's a great sign for this offense because this year we know there's been a little bit of inconsistency. And I think the big... Touchdown, Bears! Made the grab and finished the deal in the end zone. These guys are really hitting their stride in week four as they push out that lead. The offense strikes again to extend its lead here in the second half. And they got everything working. How great is this? You extend your lead, now you get your defense back on the field. Great job taking advantage of the situation and building on that lead. They'll line up to go for two. On the run, it's Finn. Into the end zone for the two-point conversion as they extend the lead. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. From a couple of yards deep, he'll bring it out. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. They're down by 21 points, but you get a touchdown here and you do at least apply a little game pressure, Jesse. It's true. I think for them to get back in this one at this point now, they need the quarterback to play his best football. He's going to have to be good really pre-snap, David, making sure they're in the right looks, and he's got to be really good with his decision making. He's got to be dialed in because defensively you're giving up. And the pass rush is effective, and they tackle him at the 19. Sometimes you beat your guy and you get sacked so clean. And sometimes, like on this play, the DBs do a great job covering, make the QB hold the football, and then the rush gets home. And they are looking for a ball play that'll work. Now facing second and long from the 19. He's looking to throw. With the catch, it's Horn. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. Here's the handoff. 
He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll pick up the first down after a tough run there. And the Buffaloes come to the line with a fresh set of downs. He'll try to pop the draw. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. After that last loss, it's second and 12. They'll go right back to it. Not a whole lot of progress made there on the short run. And this offense can ill afford to come up empty on this drive, already trailing by multiple possessions. Makes a connection. And they are finding some space in this defense. He's got it down to the 25. This guy's gotten off to a good statistical start, guys. With that last completion, he's already now over 1,000 passing yards on the season. And man, you know he's looking for more. All the way down to the 25-yard line, it's first and 10. Looking for a man, it's Sanders. Find his man down the middle. They stop him almost immediately. Short gain there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. Quarterback wants to throw on second down. It falls incomplete. He was trying to find his man for six. A manageable distance on third down as they try to convert from the 20. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. They'll send out the kicker to try to salvage this drive. Visualizing the right ball flight from 39 yards out in the right hash. Splits the uprights. It's good. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? Two very different emotions inside the locker rooms of these teams who did battle today. LSU had a dominant win, the kind the folks in Baton Rouge were used to in 2019 when Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson led the Tigers to a national title. Talk about a special team. A lot to go through in the film session this week for both teams. But boy, it sure is going to be easier for the side that came away with the win. Yeah, how about that? Sounds as if they had a good ball game there. Kevin, thanks for the update. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. Getting some heat. Didn't have much of a choice there but to get rid of it. After the misfire, it's second down. Power football with the run. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-game land. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. And he makes the grab, and let's hold on just a minute here as the officials are going to have a second look. So the officials take a closer look, and the replay booth will overturn the call. He gets a block. The coverage team was down there to corral him. They made the stop, and they'll mark it at the 39. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Went to the running game on first down. Now here they come again. Small game, I know. But again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass. Make him honor the run game. you got to do a lot of this. So the offense accepts a penalty, and they'll get a little farther away from their own end zone. Back to throw, it's Sanders. He fires to the left side. And this senior quarterback a little too bold there, and he's lucky he didn't get picked off throwing into double coverage. And you want consistency from your quarterback, man. You don't want the up and down. You don't want the roller coaster. And last week, man, you had the highs of highs, and now this week, just off. He's all over the place. He's not completing the ball at a high percentage. And you just want to find some middle ground and some consistency so this offense can find out exactly who they are and build it consistent. Got a man. It's hard. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. From the gun, running back gets to give. 
Snowed under after a pickup of two. They'll mark it at the eight. Let's see what they've got on second down. What a day it's been on the ground for these two guys, and they just seem to get stronger as the game goes along as we take a look at the numbers. One more quarter to go, and it looks as if we are ready to play. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. And the tackle was made, but there has been a flag thrown. Holding, 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 holding. holding penalties, the ultimate drive killer. We'll see if it costs this offense here. He caught it. Takes it to the house. Touchdown, Bucks. Really nice job working the route and getting himself open. He was able to locate the football, snag it out of the air, and this guy now has five receiving touchdowns on the year. Lining up for the PAT. And they make the extra point to draw closer. It's 28-17. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. They still have the lead here, Jesse, but this would be a good time to put together a drive. You're right, Reese. You can't rest easy right now. You just watch the opponent drive down the field and score a touchdown of their own, so you've got to answer that here. Your playmakers better step up. And I don't know what it is about momentum. In all the locker rooms and all the years, coaching, everything, you can't go on a fight. You can't measure it. And the momentum has swung to the other side. You've got to get it back. On third and short, they'll ride the running back here. That one could really put this drive into high gear as they have a first down at the 37. The Bears come to the line with a new set of downs. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. They can rely on this guy to pick up solid yardage when they need it, and he's out to the 43. They've got a lead here in the fourth quarter, and there's certainly still plenty of football to go, but this is where you'd love to control the flow of the game, right? You want to dictate everything to the defense, and you do that by running the football. That was a really nice run. This offensive line is firing off late. Looks like they're getting stronger as the game goes on, and that is a good sign for the offense. I mean, sometimes you overthink it. Sometimes running the football on third and short with the lead is not the worst thing in the world. Keep that clock ticking. But now, decided to go for it, setting up a fourth down. And this looks like a situation where you should punt the football. They'll run it from the gun. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Not what they had in mind to start this drive. Here comes second and 13. Wants to throw. It's Sanders. Got his man in the middle. Several defenders get an assist on that tackle. They're facing a third down. This defense better not blink. I know they've got a lead here in the fourth quarter, but just look at who they're going against. This quarterback is one of the best in the nation. They cannot rest on their laurels. Someone's going to have to make a play. And the Buffaloes send out the punt unit. After that incompletion, fourth and short now on their own side of the field, I think there's a lot of coaches in normal circumstances that would stay conservative and just punt the ball away, but you're trailing here in the fourth quarter. I think the offense needs to stay out on the field. you got to go for it. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. They'll run behind the big guys on the right. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. It's going to be tough sledding for the offense here. They're trying to ice this game by running the football and leading the clock. They've got a pretty good lead here late in the game. The defense knows the run's coming, right? So they're going to be loading the line of scrimmage, getting stops like what they just did. Be interesting to see what the offense does on this next one. That'll be enough for the first down, and they'll mark it at the 48. 
He just keeps piling up numbers with completion after completion in this standout performance. Yeah, and I think some people might say late in the game, you got the win, everything's in hand, be a little bit conservative. Or you just say, I'm just going to keep doing me. And what I do with this offense is throw the football all over the yard, and I'm going Makes a catch at the 15. And he cruises his way to the house. Touchdown, Baylor! They extend the lead here in the fourth, and after stumbling early, about to push their record to 3-1. There's no mercy rule in college football, man. They've got a huge lead here in the fourth quarter. They are still chucking it, and they are still scoring. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And now with the extra point, they're up by 18 here in the fourth. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. 35, Looking for blockers. And they'll haul down the returner to start us on the next drive. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. They just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. Got a lot of running room. Touchdown, Buffalo! And once he found some daylight, it was time to make a house call. Timing and better execution, that is just what a quarterback and wide receiver need. And it's timing, it's route running, right? you got to be precise. you got to know exactly what yard you're running to. The quarterback receiver on the same page. That's why you get the touchdown. Ready to try the point after. And with the extra point, they now trail 35-24. Aggressive play calling on that drive. Just two plays, they get the long touchdown pass to pay it off. And he'll bring it out of the end zone. He stopped at the 23, a couple yards short of where he would have been with a touchback. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. He's going to pass. Snagged in the middle, it's Johnson. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage. And nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. Looks as if the defense was a little too eager there. Got into the neutral zone, and that'll be a five-yard penalty. Defense. Defense way over eager there, and now the entire playbook just opens up before the eyes of this offensive coordinator. To the air, it's Finn. Looking down the middle. Got his man downfield. And more yards after contact. Oh, look out, there he goes. Couldn't quite nudge it in. Not sure you could get much closer, but it'll be first and goal. This guy's done a lot of good things early this year, throwing the football. With that last completion, that now takes him over 1,000 yards passing for the year. Well, offensively, they knew they were going to have some matchups they could take advantage of in this one. And all of a sudden, this quarterback has now over 300 yards passing in the game. Defensively, David, he has got them on their heels. And he's been showing you a little bit of everything. He can throw it all over the field to all different receivers, to his tight ends, to his running backs. Really has the ability to spread it around. And now over 300 yards. Still some time left and can put up even bigger. Snag in the end zone. Touchdown, Bay! They extend this lead, and it looks as if they are going to make it two wins in a row. And this offense continuing to put up points. This game's out of reach. You know you're going to win. 
but still throwing the football, still finding that connection. I imagine there'll be some salty handshakes at the end of this game. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And now with the extra point, they're up by 18 here in the fourth. And let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin? Guys, right back to your game after we update the nation on this one. Louisville found a way to pull out a victory. It wasn't vintage Cardinals football today. Those Cards fans won't remember this one forever, but they will remember it was a W. 60 minutes of football and a convincing outcome, and certainly a game with implications far beyond just the standings, fellas. And Kevin Connors keeping an eye on everything all over the country. Sounds like they had a good one there. Back to throw, it's Sanders. Got his man quickly. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. They'll throw it on first down. Pulls it in. It's Horn. Ripping off a pretty good chunk of yardage. They've got it out to the 41 with the first down. Looking to throw it again. He's got an open man. Flying out to the left. And the defense couldn't corral him, and he took it all the way. Touchdown, Colorado. Like a Thanksgiving turkey. They're just being caught. No shot. They have no idea how to get in this quarterback's head. He's on fire. Everything he's doing is working defensively. We've got to figure something out. We've got to try to do something a little bit different. Bring more pressure. At this right shoot, he's on so much fire, you might as well just send everybody. Blitz everybody, live with the results, because everything else ain't working anyways. And right down the middle. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. They are running out of time here. They need to get the ball back. They'll line up for the onside kick. He's able to grab the football, and the hands team gets the job done. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. They'll run it to keep the clock moving. Man down on the play as the officials take a break to let him be checked out. Defense looks as if it's coming. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. Handoff to the lone back. And this one will be stopped for no gain. We reached the two-minute warning, and this offense will be quite content just to drain the rest of the time away. Looking to throw, it's Finn. Fires to the wideout. So spot in the middle. They bring him down, but he's got a first and goal from the 10. Well, this guy's been a go-to guy for this offense all game long. We've seen that, and here on a critical third down late in the game with the lead, guess who shows up with another big one? That guy. He'll be brought down at the five-yard line, and this defense is on its heels. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Give to the back. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Baylor! They've built a little cushion and now closer to getting a victory here in week four. That score looks as if this one might have put it a little too far out of reach. Yeah, this game's pretty much over. That was just the icing on the cake. But, you know, speaking of cake, I'm, I'm kind of hungry. Can we, can we get out of here? Can we finish this game so I can go get something to eat? They'll try to add another to their lead. And now with the extra point, they're up by 18 here in the fourth. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll start the return inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Got his man to the left. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. Uh, 
Trying to find his man on first down. Fires into traffic, picked off. Bringing it back. And he's wrapped up after a solid return on the pick. The number one objective for a defense is to make the offense one-dimensional. Well, when they're trailing by this much late in the game, they're one-dimensional. They have to pass the football. We can bring more speed on the field. You see it. We know you're throwing the football. Nice break on the football. Nice interception. This one's almost over. Boy, this is just the type of field position this offense wants. The give to the back. He's brought down, but not before they pick up the big first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. They'll ride the hot hand. Gets it past the first down marker and still running. And he's brought down after a nice game. Running out the clock seems to be a mere formality here as they are ready to snap it in victory formation. And they're just about out of chances. The defense can stop it one more time as the quarterback takes a knee. The points weren't the issue, guys, but they couldn't string together enough stops to get the victory. Yeah, good news, bad news scenario, I guess. Good news is you're going to score. This offense looks like they can be explosive and they can light up the scoreboard. Bad news, though, David, they've got a lot to clean up on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and welcome to college football nowadays, right? This is how it works, a ton of points. Defenses... Learn as you go, but you got to get better. you got to force some turnovers, create those negative plays. You just can't give up so many points. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.